Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we are taking a look at French military rifles, specifically the 1890 Berthier carbine. This is the car uh, cavalry carbine version of this rifle, and this is the very first version of the Berthier that was actually adopted. Now, in 1886, France had adopted the 1886 Lebel rifle, which was, it was a groundbreaking rifle at the time. It was the first military smokeless powder rifle, uh, held eight rounds in a magazine. It would show, it would become obsolete relatively quickly, but when it was adopted, it was cutting edge. Now, one of the problems with the Lebel is that it wasn't very suitable to conversion into carbine form. Problem is it has a tubular magazine under the barrel, so if you cut the barrel length down, you're also cutting down uh, the magazine size. They did some experiments with uh, carbine versions of the Lebel, but came to the conclusion that, uh, interestingly, it was partly the magazine capacity. They actually had some trouble getting the magazine to work well with four rounds in a short version, um, and they didn't like the weight. They thought it was too heavy for a cavalry carbine. So. Uh, various other people suggested other uh, ideas for carbines. The one that was eventually adopted was this one, uh, proposed by André Berthier. He was actually a railway, senior railway employee in Paris, so had some engineering background, and he came up with the idea to combine the Lebel rifle action with the clip feeding system taken from Ferdinand von Monlacher. This is actually what the German army had adopted in 1888, as uh, part of their commission Gewehr 88 rifle. Uh, and this provided a way to, to get a, a repeating rifle and a magazine capacity without a tubular magazine. So at this time, uh, and in fact the reason that the carbines hadn't really been pushed at this point was the German cavalry was still using the Gewehr 71 for the same reason, which was a single shot rifle, for the same reason that the French had trouble making a carbine version of the Lebel, the Germans had trouble making a carbine version of the uh, 1871-84 rifle, which also had a tubular magazine under the barrel. So German cavalry was still running around with single shot rifles. Until 1890, when uh, they finally put into production the Carabiner 88, the little short version, like this size, of the commissioned Gewehr 88 rifle. Now the German cavalry have five shot repeating rifles, and at this point the French cavalry uh, service decides that, oh, it's just become a lot more important that they have to maintain some sort of balance with uh, German military equipment. So now they really want a carbine, and they kind of rush uh, a, a decision at that point. And the best one out there, the rifle that is most suitable, is André Berthier's. So this is adopted in 1890, and it replaces what the French cavalry had been using, which was the single shot Gras cavalry rifle. So uh, interestingly, they actually made the, the new rifle, the new carbine, relatively shorter. Um, this thing only has a 17.8 inch barrel. Uh, I would presume that this is because the smokeless powder just doesn't need as much barrel length to be equally effective. Now, the majority of these rifles would be manufactured in 1891 and 1892. Uh, in total, there was also a small batch made between like 1900 and 1904, and then there was a batch ordered in 1905, but sources are really unclear as to whether they were actually produced or not. So total production of these carbines was either 160,000 or 200,000, depending on whether that last order was ever actually produced. They were made at two different factories, Saint-Étienne and Châtellerault, and they were actually made in a slightly different configuration than this uh, when they first came out. So let me show you that. So this is actually the second model of the cavalry carbine, which you can determine by this rear sling bar. Originally, these guns had a sling swivel on the bottom of the stock, and on the front they actually had a round sling ring on the bottom of the barrel band, and then the sling would run underneath the rifle. Uh, however, it was found that this was really uh, quite uh, uncomfortable to carry. Uh, the gun would slam into your back unpleasantly while you're on horseback, and so in 1894 it was decided to retrofit the guns. Uh, the new ones coming out of production uh, would have this second pattern of sling attachments, which involved a solid bar on the left side, and a bar like this inleted into the stock. So starting 1894 the new production guns had that, and then in 1909 they went back and retrofitted uh, all of the existing guns to have this style of sling. So. This is a, they're hard to find as a, as a second pattern gun, they're even more difficult to find as a first pattern with the original sling setup. 
Now to look at some of the markings. Here on the left side of the receiver we're going to have the arsenal. So this is a Sun NTN gun. They were also produced by Chatellerot. And then we have our model number, model of 1890. Up on the barrel we are going to have um, a couple of inspection marks. Uh, the, the controller, the inspector who actually certified the gun, and we have a serial number. Uh, this is a cursive F. The Sun NTN production of these guns was F and then just slightly into the G series. They used a five digit serial number, so when they hit 99999 they would flip over to the next uh, letter. Uh, on these Chatellerot had the A series and Sun NTN started with the F series. You will also find that serial number on the bolt and on the bottom of the magazine, as well as on the buttstock. Now this side of the stock should have a round stamp on it indicating the actual date of acceptance um, as opposed to date of production. On um, this one it's missing, this might be a replacement stock, I am not entirely sure. The rear sight here has settings from uh, two out, 200 out to 1000 meters, and then you can actually shoot at longer ranges by flipping the sight up. On the reverse side you will see that the markings go up to 2000 meters. So you would just adjust this slider to where you want it, 2000 for example, um, and then good luck. But this was pretty typical, in fact this is entirely typical on rifles of this period. One common element on French rifles of this period is also the rod, which is threaded into the receiver. So I can unscrew it. There we go, pull that out. So you'll notice it has a threaded section back here where it threads into the receiver so that it doesn't come loose when firing. But at this end it's just a solid uh, brass rod head. This is actually not a cleaning rod, although it's commonly called that. Uh, this is for both stacking the rifles, so you can lean several up together, uh, and then it is also for knocking out a spent, uh, a stuck cartridge case should you have a problem with extraction. There's a slot cut in the side of the stock here for the rod, and in the 1920s that was an element that was uh, determined to no longer be relevant, and a great many Berthier carbines were updated to fill in this uh, slot and get rid of the clearing rod. So being in its original configuration this still has that. So Berthier's original design actually used a four round clip, but that was changed to three for the production version of the gun. At the time it was really, it was kind of seen that uh, this was an update from a single shot rifle, so having three rounds at your fingertips was just as good as having four because hey you're getting three rounds with the same motion that you would originally uh, have only gotten one with, and, and hey that's good enough. So these are dummy rounds, but you have a three round clip. It is uh, symmetrical and reversible so it can go in either way, and you just press it in right there and it's going to catch in place. There is a button here on the front of the trigger guard that allows you to remove a partial clip. Uh, the spring, by the way, the magazine spring in this one's a little sticky. Normally if you hit that button this will pop out with uh, some energy. All of the Berthier carbines have this bent bolt handle, and uh, there is no manual safety on the rifle, just like there was no manual safety on the Lebel. However, what's interesting to note is that uh, early in production, the Berthiers actually had two cocking notches, two sear notches here on the cocking piece. And so if you closed the bolt, like so, you could then pull this, the cocking piece back just slightly to right there, and that was considered a safety notch. So if you pull the trigger it will drop, but at that distance it did not have enough energy to actually detonate a, a primer. Um, that was used for a little while, and then it was later removed as being unnecessary and really kind of ineffective. Um, it was certainly not not a fast way to to operate a safety, and didn't it, it just wasn't effective and necessary. So they got rid of that, and later Berthiers that you see will have only one cut out in the back of the cocking piece. Well, I should mention uh, the bottom of the magazine is open here. Uh, that is because, as is typical with a Monlicker style of system, when you chamber the third round or the last round in the clip, the empty clip simply falls out the bottom. Should it get stuck you can just stuff a new clip loaded in the top and it will uh, push the empty clip out the bottom.
As for disassembly, I will go ahead and take the bolt out for you. It is a procedure that is not ideal. Um, on both the Lebel and the Berthier, you actually have to remove this screw and take the bolt head out uh, separately before you can get the bolt body out of the gun. So put this up here. Take the bolt head screw out. And then need to bring this to here. There's a cutout in the receiver right there so that I can rotate the bolt head vertical. Should be able to anyway. There we go. And then I can take the back end of the bolt out and the bolt head out separately. So uh, that allows you to that you have to do that to get the bolt out of the gun, and that would persist uh, all the way through. They never changed that system on the Berthier. One last thing I should definitely mention is that these are extremely light and handy rifles. Uh, these cavalry carbines came in at right at three kilograms or 6.6 .6 pounds. Uh, overall length is 0.945 of a meter, uh, which would be like 37 inches. And uh, the barrel length is 17.8 inches or 0.465. Uh, meters. So really handy little guns. They kick, uh, but great to carry. So these are relatively scarce guns to find these days because while they did make a fair number of them in the first place, uh, the vast majority were ultimately converted into more modern versions of the carbines. Uh, either 1892 carbines, which were then equipped with a bayonet lug um, after the cavalry was really made obsolete by World War I, or a uh, model of 1916 carbines with a bayonet lug and a handguard and a five round magazine. We'll get to further videos on those models in a little while, but uh, it's relatively uncommon to find one that survived in this original cavalry carbine form. So hopefully you enjoyed learning something about the 1890 cavalry carbine version of the Berthier today. Uh, we will be continuing this series with the uh, later incarnations of this rifle, the next one up in a couple days is going to be the Curassier's carbine, which is a particularly cool one. So uh, if you enjoy seeing this sort of thing, do consider checking out my Patreon account. It's support from folks there that makes it possible for me to bring you video series like this one. And if you are a connoisseur of French firearms in general, you may want to check out that cool shirt that is available now, but only for a limited time. So. A way to show your support for the French soldiers that are the butt of too many unfair jokes here in the United States. Thanks for watching.